the challenges associated with, you know, in the field of emerging infectious diseases are numerous. The one that I've been particularly involved in is, is trying to develop local capacity for the identification of, of new viruses or, or the diagnostics, diagnostic support. I think if we can develop um, local capacity, so developing the ability of these local communities to identify when new viruses move from the animal population into the human population, then this will prevent these outbreaks from getting as big as we've seen with the Ebola virus epidemic. There's a great opportunity for scientists to gain invaluable experience in, in training in these environments. Often as a scientist, you spend all your time in a, in a shiny laboratory in the UK doing experiments that often are very far removed from science that's going to have any real impact. By spending time in these developing you know, low and middle income countries, you can have a real impact. You can see how your skills can uh, have a dramatic impact on the ability of a local community to respond to infectious diseases. If there was one thing I, we could change with respect to the scientific career structure, I think we could better recognize the effort that is required to do capacity building exercises in these low and middle income countries, because scientists can invest a huge amount of time and effort in developing capacity and training locals, but that's often not recognized when it comes to promotion and things like that. The people who get recognition are those who publish the biggest papers, not necessarily the people who train you know, 50, research technicians in, in sub-Saharan Africa.